Hey everyone, it's Nurse Sarah, and in this review, I want to go over the STI known as gonorrhea. So let's get started. Gonorrhea is caused by the bacterium Neisseria gonorrhea, and this bacterium is gram negative. And how I remember that is I look at the word gonorrhea, and at the beginning, I see a G, and then a little bit later, I see an N. That tells me it's gram negative. Now, when we gram stain this bacteria, what we will see is these little round bacteria occurring in pairs within a capsule, and we term this as diplococci. Now, how is gonorrhea transmitted? It can be transmitted sexually through unprotected contact through the genitals, the mouth, the anus with a person who is infected with gonorrhea, or it can be transmitted during pregnancy, particularly the delivery part. So as the baby goes through the birth canal, they can come into contact with this bacteria. Unfortunately, it can lead to complications Applications for that newborn. One, it can cause premature birth. But a big thing that we're concerned about is that this bacteria can get in the eyes and lead to an eye infection, which eventually could lead to blindness. It can also cause meningitis. So what are the signs and symptoms of gonorrhea? Well, to help us remember those, let's remember a mnemonic I created called the CLAP. The CLAP is actually another name that some people use for gonorrhea, like a nickname. So T, we have tender testicles. The testicles in males can get extremely swollen and hurt. And if this is not treated, it could actually lead to infertility. Hurts to urinate, this is a really big one. There's a burning sensation whenever people try to urinate. They may think they just have a urinary tract infection, but instead they could have this STI. Erythema with swelling, this is going to affect whatever organ or area of the body that got infected with gonorrhea. So it could be the genitals, the throat, or the anus. We have C for conjunctivitis. This is an eye infection, and mainly this is going to occur in that newborn if they came into contact with this bacteria in the vaginal canal. Now, good thing is, is we have a cure for it. After birth, a lot of babies, they get erythromycin ointment in their eye to prevent that. Lack of signs and symptoms, especially in women. They may think they have just a vaginal infection or urinary tract infection. They may not have all these other signs and symptoms. So educate your patient about that. Abnormal discharge, this is another big one. The discharge will be thick. It'll be greenish and yellow. And again, it's gonna be on whatever area was affected. So the penis, the vagina, the anus, and then pelvic inflammatory disease, PID, PID. This can happen if we don't treat it. So this could spread to the fallopian tubes, the ovaries, the uterus, causing pain, abdominal pain, infertility, and eptopic pregnancies. Now let's talk about the nurse's role with this STI. So as a nurse, we play a huge role in helping identify patients who have signs and symptoms that could be associated with gonorrhea. And then if they do, we could get them tested. And if it comes back positive, they can get treatment because fortunately there's a cure for gonorrhea. So screening, we want to make sure that we are assessing patients for signs and symptoms. Those signs and symptoms that we talked about in the mnemonic, the CLAP, and particularly those patients who are at high risk. Like for instance, young patients who are sexually active of the age of 25 or less, they're at risk. And then regardless of age, anyone who has multiple sex partners, they're not using protection during those encounters, they're incarcerated, or they've tested positive for an STI. Because a lot of times, like for instance, gonorrhea and chlamydia, they occur together. So they do have another STI, you just want to go ahead and test them for this as well. Now the CDC recommends that Non-pregnant patients who are sexually active less than 25 years of age, they are yearly tested for this STI. And then if the patient is pregnant, they should be tested during their first prenatal visit. This includes patients who are less than 25 years of age. Now, if the patient is older and they're at their first prenatal visit, you would test them if they're at high risk. And then again, these patients will be tested during that third trimester, about 28 weeks. Now, testing can include a urine sample or a swab collection from the area that is affected. And again, Whatever we typically test for gonorrhea, chlamydia is gonna also be tested for as well because these two STIs tend to occur together. And then another thing you wanna be familiar with as the nurse is the treatment. So we're dealing with a gram negative bacteria. Therefore, treatment is going to revolve around antibiotic therapy. Currently, the CDC recommends that non-pregnant patients who have uncomplicated cases of gonorrhea be treated with a single dose of ceftriaxone IM and if chlamydia has not been excluded to add on doxycycline. 
Now, one thing I wanna point out is that older guidelines set by the CDC did recommend dual therapy where we use ceftriaxone IM and azithromycin, but that is no longer the case. And then for pregnant patients, the recommendation is the same, except if chlamydia has not been excluded, another medication other than doxycycline will have to be used because this medication is actually contraindicated in pregnancy because it can affect bone and tooth development. And then in terms of education, you wanna make sure that you're telling your patient who's receiving treatment for gonorrhea. The number one, that they do not have any type of sexual activity until seven days after all their medications have been taken and they're not having any signs and symptoms. And then when they resume activity, that they make sure that they're using some type of barrier method so they don't get reinfected again. And that it's really important that their partner gets tested and treated so they don't get reinfected. And then once they're done with all their medications, this includes non-pregnant and pregnant patients that in three months that they follow up again and get retested just to confirm that the infection is gone or they haven't become reinfected. Okay, so that wraps up this review. And don't forget to access the free quiz in the description below that will test you on all this material that we just covered.